This story is brought to you by The Month of Lerv. The Month of Lerv! Part 3 My Mare Friend! Rarity wondered if there was something wrong with Applejack's head. She didn't mean it to be rude, heavens no. Why would she be rude? But something was quite out of character about the farm pony today. Applejack was the element of honesty, yet she was lying to Magnum just by coming here today. But she had been willing to tell poor, innocent Spiky Wikey the horrid truth. What was going on? Rare, my little rare. That's my girl. Loud shouts echoed from across the field. Rarity winced and ducked her head in case any pony recognized her. Magnum came hurtling towards them and instantly ruffled Rarity's mane. She let out a sharp yelp and jumped backwards. Father, that hurts! And you're messing up my mane! Oops, sorry, her father replied, sitting back on his haunches. His blue eyes were alight with pleasure as he looked his little girl over once again. My, my, Rare, have I told you what a lovely young mare you become? Only a million times. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Magnum smiled, pulling Rarity in for another hug. The unicorn mare's face flushed as she noticed Applejack was watching with obvious curiosity. Magnum turned and burst into a wide grin. And you must be Applejack. Pleasure to meet you, young filly, pleasure to meet you. AJ's eyebrows lifted in surprise. She let out a warm chuckle and blushed. Well, I guess it's rather nice to meet you too, Mr. Magnum. Now, now, call me Magnum. Rarity's father was grinning so hard it appeared that his face would burst. Casually, he put one hoof over her shoulder and began to trot toward the restaurant. Come on, Rare, he yelled over his shoulder at his dumbstruck daughter. I'm sure we have a lot to talk about. Heart flitting like a million butterflies were trapped inside. Rarity followed, preparing to meet her fate. She could hear the time bomb ticking, one second at a time. Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk. Rarity was pleasantly surprised to realize that, so far, dinner with her father and Applejack honestly hadn't been that bad. They had all ordered their meals and taken their seats in the outside section of the Daisy Days Cafe, upon which Applejack had asked Magnum how he had earned his cutie mark, three footballs, causing Rarity's enthusiastic father to launch wholeheartedly into a tale of his school experiences in the expertise of sporting. Rarity herself had heard this story hundreds of times, but she was pleased to see Applejack nodding and seeming genuinely interested in all the things she herself was not. And so Fiery Splash dove at me, and I swear he was as big as a table, and he slammed into me, knocking me down and the ball out of my hooves. Magnum waved wildly across his front hooves as he exaggerated the scene. Rarity noted Applejack fighting back a chuckle and had to wince to fight down one of her own. The story continued, and Rarity felt her eyelids beginning to droop. Choking back a yawn, she excused herself from the situation to go inside and use the mayor's room. Trotting into the cleanly tiled room, the white unicorn levitated some of the pure water out of the gleaming silver faucet and washed her face with it, watching her normal light blue eyeshadow run into the drain. Everything was going wrong. But then why was everything going right? A sob choked in Rarity's throat. She stared at her disheveled reflection in the mirror to see a confused and clearly upset mare staring back at her. This was all Applejack's fault. She had been furious earlier, so if she was supposed to be so angry, why was she just nervous? Rarity sighed and looked down. She was glad she wasn't crying. Instead, she looked down at the little spiral designs engraved on the tiles of the floor. They were actually quite a beautiful color, a teal that reminded her of the ocean waves, or maybe Fluttershy's eyes. She had always adored Fluttershy's eyes, simply gorgeous for modeling. Deep breaths, Rarity, she whispered, levitating her purple mane perfectly back into place. Deep breaths. Time to go and face your father. She sighed. It felt like her chest was choked up. And Applejack. The clopping of her hooves on the tiles as she entered seemed to toll out the tune she had been trying to wrench out of her brain the whole time now. Tick, talk, tick, talk. Oh, there you are, Rare! Magnum looked up from under his wide-brimmed hat as she approached, bursting into a wide grin. You missed the ending of the cutie mark tale. A real stunner, that one is. Yep, Applejack agreed, smiling at Rarity like nothing about the scene of her lounging with Magnum like they were old buddies was wrong whatsoever. You should have been there, Rare. 
Her green eyes blinked, changing into an expression of confusion. What happened to your fancy schmancy and makeup? It washed off in the restroom, Rarity replied, lifting her head ever so slightly to keep a prideful appearance. She didn't want to seem nervous or like her stomach was fluttering like a million butterflies were trapped inside. That's all right with you, I suppose, Father. Magnum laughed like it was all some sort of big joke. Of course I'm all right with it. He sighed and reclined in his seat. Haven't I always told you to lose the makeup stuff and be more natural? That's what I keep telling her. Applejack snickered. Rarity felt her face flush hot. It just washed off, she squeaked in a shriller than usual voice. Nothing else to it. She looked down at the grass, suddenly taking a very peculiar interest in a ladybug creeping stealthily over a blade of grass. AJ lifted one eyebrow, let out a short snort, and struck up another hearty conversation with Magnum, which was luckily cut off by the arrival of their food. Rarity smiled heartily at the server, a tan stallion with a pale blue mane slicked back along his scalp. Nodding as he placed her zesty cucumber sandwich in front of her, she intercepted it with her own magic and took a hasty bite, trying to stay out of the conversation as much as she possibly could. Applejack welcomed her hay salad with open orange hooves, while Magnum used his deeper blue magic to remove his hat, revealing his previously hidden horn, took his daisy and daffodil sandwich, and began to eat. The waiter nodded as Rarity dropped five bits into his waiting hoof and trotted off. The silence grew, and grew, and continued to grow. Magnum was the first to break the silence, and his words snapped Rarity's heart in two. Here it was, the time bomb finally going off. Tick. Talk. Bam. So, Applejack, how long have you and my sweet little Rarity here been dating? He asked it as a totally casual question, like it was something that he asked to his daughter every day, except it wasn't. Rarity didn't know what to say, even though it hadn't been her he was addressing. Applejack looked up like the question surprised her, though she had to have known it was coming. It was her who was on par with this whole idea of fake dating thing anyway. Rarity felt a bitter twinge grip her heart. She wrinkled her nose. Applejack, however, said nothing. Magnum watched, blue eyes clearly confused by the lack of answer. Rarity, too, watched, waiting. But for the first time, Applejack actually looked nervous. Rarity drew a sharp breath. Was this even possible? It was her idea to go along with this crazy misconception, wasn't it? So why wasn't Applejack making up her lies like she said she would? The truth hit Rarity like a ton of bricks. Applejack couldn't bring herself to lie. She was the element of honesty. Father, may I speak with Applejack in private for a few minutes, please? The words came out of Rarity's mouth before she realized it, but it was too late now. The orange earth pony glanced at her curiously, but said nothing, as if realizing the unicorn had just saved her skin. Magnum chuckled, digging into his sandwich none the wiser. Of course you can, girls. Go right ahead. Rarity levitated Applejack's hoof and dragged her over. Putting her orange ear up to her own muzzle, Rarity hissed, We need to talk. Now. They found themselves sheltered behind the daisy days. Applejack with beads of sweat rolling down the back of her neck and Rarity with anxious, angry blue eyes staring her down. Rare, I'm sorry, I really am, but... Spill the beans! Rarity glared with no mercy. What is going on here, Applejack? Why are you doing this? Trying to fake some sort of relationship between us and lie to my father's face? She couldn't help it now. The tears were coming. It's not funny, Applejack! Oh, shucks, Rare. AJ looked down, chest heaving and lip trembling. I don't know if you would understand. Tell me! Rarity practically screamed. Applejack looked back at her eyes, pleading. What if you don't like the answer? Rarity forced herself to take a deep breath in, hold it, and then release it. Applejack, please tell me. Right now, I need to know. Well... Applejack winced and looked down, blonde mane hanging in scraggly waves over her face. I guess I just really like you, Rarity. The unicorn couldn't believe what she was hearing. One of her ears twitched in order to hear it better. I'm sorry, what did you just tell me? I really like you, Rare. You're pretty and generous and kind and one of my best friends, even if we have little nothing in common. 
and you offered to take me on this lunch and fancy schmancy thing with your dad, even though I've never told you about my parents. Applejack blinked rapidly, and Rarity gasped inwardly as she realized she was fighting back tears. I should have told you a long time ago, but I didn't want your pity. You're so stubborn and prideful, Rarity breathed breathlessly, feeling like the whole world was in some sort of dream, and she was inside a bubble, one that was soon to pop. And when your dad made that little slip of the thought, I thought I wouldn't be lying to him if I could make his thoughts a reality by the end of the day. Applejack was openly crying now, and Rarity wanted to hug her but held back, watching with wide eyes. That's why I told Spike that I was really hoping it wouldn't have been a lie. Oh, Applejack, I can't believe you like me in this way. I never knew. Rarity was surprised to find that she was not blushing, but instead her voice was steady and firm. If you had just told me in the first place, this could have been avoided. You would have gone with me as your date? Now she was blushing. Rarity looked away. Um, well, I would tell him he had made a simple mistake, would point out that we are just friends, and... Applejack looked at her, green eyes angry and hard, causing the unicorn to trail off. You don't lack like me, then. Rarity took a deep breath in and released it, trying to stop a blush from spreading like wildfire across her face. I never said that. Then how do you think of me? That was an easy question, Rarity answered simply. You are a very good friend, and I am unsure what my feelings for you are involving this matter. I think that we should discuss this later and get back to my father now. Applejack stood up, straightening her hat. It took her a few minutes to respond, but when she did, her eyes were bright with gratitude. You know, you're right, Rare. We shouldn't be thinking about this right now, when we need to be visiting your father. It isn't called Father's Day for no reason, and we have to tell him the truth. She winked, wiping her eyes to cleanse them of all previous tears. Rarity nodded, feeling her breath come out easily and simply. Yes, she agreed with Applejack, turning her head out to the front again. Let's. We'll discuss this later. Of course, there's still the matter of Spiky Wiky to deal with, and the fact all our friends will be curious, but let's not think about that now. Rarity turned the corner, smiling at Applejack as they trotted over to Magnum's waiting form. We'll start with the fact that this was just a misconception. Yes, just a misconception. The End